All right, welcome back to the Swift channel. My name is Max, and in this video, you're going to learn how to use UI hosting controller in Swift UI. So by the end of this video, you should have a decent understanding of UI hosting controller and how to use it in your own Swift iOS applications in Xcode by the end of this video. All right, so I've been gone for a while. If you've been watching the channel, I haven't made a video in close to a year, if not over a year, but it's safe to say I'm back now and I'm gonna be making content regularly. Uh, that's gonna start off uh, with a few videos each week. So today I'm gonna to make a video tomorrow and the next day. Regardless, let's hop into UI hosting controller for those of you who are just looking to learn how to use this and don't really care about uh, my being gone and coming back. So yeah, let's just get started. So with UI hosting controller, we can, in a sense, bridge UI kit with Swift UI. And by watching this entire video, you'll kind of be able to get an understanding of what that means because there's another thing called UI view representable, I believe, which allows us to do basically the opposite thing, which is letting us use UI kit, UI view controllers in Swift UI views. So again, uh, hosting controller will allow us to use UI or Swift UI inside of UI kit, whereas UI view representable lets us use UI kit controller view controllers inside of Swift UI. Okay. So if that doesn't make sense, just keep watching because it'll come clear as we learn about both of these subjects, specifically hosting controller in this video. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation as we kind of usually do uh, when we're learning about a new kind of topic. And this one's pretty simple in that we can just go into the documentation here and get some information on it pretty quickly. All right, so it, you can see here it's a view controller, it's a view controller, a UI kit view controller that manages a Swift UI view, view hierarchy. All right, so essentially you can get a little bit more information here. Let's see what it says. Creates a UI hosting controller object when you wanna integrate Swift UI views into a UI, UI kit hierarchy. All right, so that's exactly kind of what I just said like five times. So. <laughs> Uh, without repeating it, let's just go ahead and dive into the code. So I have a couple tabs here that I wanna look at throughout the video, but first thing we're gonna do is just open up a new Xcode project. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift New with Xcode open. So Command Shift N and that brings up this screen. And for the purposes of this application, I'm going to disable uh, Swift UI. I'm just gonna select Storyboard because this kind of is for you using uh, in an application that uses storyboards because you might wanna integrate SwiftUI into an application that you have already started building, right? So for me, I'm working on a few apps that I plan on pushing to the app store and we'll probably let you guys test using test flight, but that's in the future, that's a different video. And I need to use some SwiftUI, right? But I don't really have it set up for SwiftUI, it's set up for storyboards, right? Uh, which I all do programmatically, I don't actually use storyboards. But regardless, what well, what I have to do is use UI hosting controller to use whatever uh, UI, Swift UI view I wanna use, right? So that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be creating a new project with storyboard selected. I'm just gonna call this uh, UI hosting controller demo, and I'm gonna throw this into a folder. And let's see. Let's go over into view controller and zoom in here, all right? All right, so what we wanna do is close this over and we want to create a Swift UI view that we can kind of inject into this controller, right? So I'm just gonna boot up the simulator. I normally do the 11 Pro, but I'm just gonna do whatever one is there just to kind of get things going. And let's just get rid of this comment and let's create a few things, okay? So first thing we wanna do is create a hosting controller, right? So if we say file private let content view HC or in HC, because we're putting a Swift UI content view in a uh, hosting controller, we're gonna set that equal to UI hosting controller. And you'll see it's not really there, right? And that's because it's part of Swift UI. So let's go ahead and import Swift UI and let's say UI hosting controller. And let's try and get that autocomplete we're gonna to wanna to choose root view, right? Now this root view is gonna be our content view, our Swift UI content view. So we'll leave that blank for now and we'll go over to this folder and hit right click new file. 
and then we will select Swift UI View in User Interface. So not Swift File, but Swift UI View. If you do Swift UI or if you do Swift File, it's just going to be blank. With Swift UI View, we can kind of have that uh, set up already for us. I'll show you in a second. I'm just going to call this uh, C View for Content View, and I'm going to hit Create. And that's going to kind of open up this little preview because it's Swift UI, and you can see this is all generated for us, which is nice. Now, I just want to customize this just to kind of keep it nice. So I'm going to say custom view in VC. Okay, so you're going to see this custom view inside of our view controller. Let's add like some padding, maybe a color. I'm trying to remember how to do this. It's been a, while, been a minute. All right, and uh, I think that should be good. Let's go ahead and uh, give it a width, actually. Let's say dot width, and let's do 200 width, 150 height, and we'll do center for alignment. Okay, so that's all we really need for the view. It has this uh, preview provider, and we can kind of just look at that if we want to, but we don't really need to. We're getting errors here, though, because we didn't provide the view, right? So if I go back to here, we have our custom view. We're getting build errors, right? Because in our view controller, we didn't provide that in the root view. So I'll just kind of expand this so we can fix that and see it in the preview. And then we'll see it in the view controller when we write the rest of our code. So we'll say C view. And then let's just hit resume here. Well, let's go into C view and then let's hit resume. And it says succeeded. And we're just going to see custom view in VC, right? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into our view controller and get it in there, right? So before I want to do that, I just want to give it a background color just so we can kind of see it a little bit better. So let's go in here and just say background. If I could type. And I'm just going to say dot. And let's say blue because we got red. And that's just going to need, need to be color.blue because it's not expecting the same parameter. This is a little bit different than foreground color, so we have to put color in front of it. Okay, now let's go into view controller. Well, if you want to see the preview, you can, but that's what it looks like. All right, so that's good. Let's go into view controller, and let's finally get to the code we want to write. I'll have to put some uh, clips at the beginning of this video to tell you guys when things are because I've been kind of slow. All right, so what we want to do is set up the HC, right? So I'm going to type a function called setup HC. I'm going to say file private func setup HC. I'm going to close this. And if you missed the first part, we just want to put the C view inside of the UI hosting controller. All right, so next thing we're going to want to do in here is we're just going to want to say add child. And it says adds the specified view controller as a child of the current view controller. So that's a little bit different than add sub view, but we're also gonna have to write that as well. So it's a little bit different, a little bit older. Let's go ahead and type in content view HC in HC. And then let's say view dot add sub view content view in HC dot view. Okay, notice I'm saying dot view. So this is a controller, whereas this is a view. Okay, so we're adding the controller to our view controller, and then we're adding the view to our controllers view okay so same idea the first line is just for controllers second line is views okay so we also have to write this line that says content view and hc dot did move so it says called after the view controller is added or removed from and then let's type it out and we can get the full description there it is added or removed from a container view controller okay so called after the view controller is added or removed from a container view controller. So essentially what we're doing is we are taking the hosting controller and we're adding it to this container controller, which is the view controller, okay? So that's, that's what we're doing. So we're moving it from Swift UI to UIKit, okay? And that's just gonna be self because we're moving it to this parent, the view controller, okay? All right, so that sets up the HC. Let's go ahead and just give it a frame and boot up our app, and it should be done. I also want to do it with some uh, like auto layout constraints programmatically, just because that's what I usually do. So you can watch this next line, and that should be it if, if you don't really care about the auto layout constraints, but let's just do both. And uh, yeah, so content view in HC dot view dot frame is equal to dot init. 
and we can just choose any one of these. I'm gonna say, I don't know, like 100, 100. And then I wanna try something that I didn't try before. I'm just gonna put 100 on the width and height. And this is spelled wrong, that's why we're getting that error. There we go. And if we boot this up, we should be able to see at least a portion of our, our view. I expect to at least see a portion in the top left or something um, in the top left of the, the iPhone. But yeah, it's expected if we don't see the whole thing because I'm kind of trying something new. Okay, so it's all there. Uh, the frame of the controller is smaller than what the view actually is, right? So if we were to hit like this button, I would believe we'd be able to see kind of like the controller frame being a little bit smaller. But this is all just off the top of my head, so this could all be wrong. Let's go ahead and take a look. However, what is right is that we're we're achieving what I said we would achieve in the beginning of the video. That's not wrong. I want to clarify that. Okay, so yeah, you can yeah, there it is. So I'm not wrong in any aspect. You can see that that sounds really cocky, but essentially what I'm trying to say is that the frame that we set that was a hundred pixels is actually indeed one hundred by hundred, and that's why you can see that the hosting controller is smaller than the view, okay? So I would expect if we were to kill this and we were to write something like content view and hc dot view dot, well, let's say content view, I guess you can't apply clips to bounds to the, the controller, but what I was trying to do is apply something like clips to bounds or masks to bounds to the controller and that way the frame would be, the view would be subject to the controller, but I don't think we can do that. So if we were to say clips to bounds here, I. It shouldn't do anything. I want to try it, however, but I don't expect it to do anything. Okay, so it did it. Uh, if we were to say masks to bounds, it's interesting because I keep uh, saying, trying things and thinking, oh, it's not going to work, and then it works, which is weird. All right, yeah, so you can use masks to bounds or clips to bounds, kind of the same thing. One's just on the layer. All right, so that's kind of how that works. Uh, let's just match the width and height and then not worry about this because it's really a, a side topic and doesn't really need to be talked about right now. So I'm gonna go into C view and we have our width 200, height 150. So I'm just gonna say that on here as well, 150 and then like width, uh, what was it, 200, something like that. I wonder if you can say view.frame, I'm gonna comment that out. But yeah, if we boot this up, it should show what we were initially seeing. And there we are, yeah. So that's exactly what we wanted. That's what we're expecting. Now, two things I wanna try before I end it, just for fun. I wanna see if I can take the frame from the Swift UI. I'm not sure how it all compiles at the moment, but let's try this and see what happens. I'm gonna take this, comment this out, and say content view in HC dot view dot frame is equal to content view. Well, okay, that was really dumb, but that's what we need. All right, so let's try it with auto layout constraints now. Let's say set up constraints. I'm gonna get rid of this line, and I'm gonna get rid of this line, and then I'm just gonna say file private func, set up constraints. And then what we're gonna do in here is just kind of do what we always do, all right? So I'm gonna comment this out. And if we reboot this, it's not gonna show anything on the screen, or at least it shouldn't. I guess uh, when we made this smaller, it still showed it. So it'll be up there, but it's not really where we want it to be, right? Because we don't have any coordinates, any X or Y origin coordinates. So what we wanna do is just say content view in HC dot translates, okay, dot view dot translates, it's equal to false. So translates auto resizing mask into constraints, set that to false, so it doesn't generate any auto constraints. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is just say content view in hc dot view dot top anchor dot constraint. If I could spell is equal to view dot top anchor. Okay, and then we're just gonna activate that. And if we boot that up, uh, I haven't tried this, but I think what it's gonna do is just have it at the top of the screen. So, okay, yeah, so it's up at the top, but the left one wasn't set. Um, so if we were to copy this, we could do like center X, center Y, but I'm just gonna say left anchor. You could also do leading anchor, and then I'm gonna say right anchor, and then right anchor here, left anchor here. That should center it at the top. So let's activate that. And then while that's compiling, I'm just gonna copy this, put it here, and say bottom anchor. 
and bottom anchor and that should center it. Okay, so without this line, it's doing that. With, uh, with this line, it should just center it. Okay, because we've got a top, bottom, left, and right anchor, which is essentially stretching out the controller to fit the entire screen, right? But then the view is just centered because Swift UI. All right, so that kind of sets that up and that's that. Pretty simple stuff, so I won't put this code on GitHub. Uh, in the more complex videos, I will. There's one more thing I wanted to look at. Let's just take a look at some of these. I thought I was gonna reference these, but I didn't. I noticed uh, this Stack Overflow post. I actually saw this and thought it would just be a good thing to kind of graze over. So if you're interested in this and just kind of reading what this says about using a UI hosting controller inside of UI view or as a UI view, feel free to like just Google that title. I haven't read this, but I thought it might be something cool to look at. So go ahead and check this out. It looks pretty similar to what we just did. So if you want to check that out, you can, just a good resource. And then in the next video, I actually want to go over UI page, not UI view, page view controller, but rather uh, UI view controller representable. And then we're also going to use UI page view controller because this seems like a good set of information that I can kind of condense into like a 10 minute video. So yeah, we'll go over that. Um, in this video, obviously it was way too long, but yeah, I'm back in the scene, back making these videos. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, subscribe, and uh, I'll be back with more coding videos. All right, peace.